Good afternoon, everyone. One of the hugest stories around the planet, United States losing power, as well as some places in Europe and our satellites. So many theories out there, everything from Operation Gotham Shield to hacking. Even the CME was proposed, but that was going away from the Earth on the other side of the sun. But interestingly, solar wind increased to 800 kilometers per second as well as at 1600 that density spike of the actual particles coming in on late April 21st. Here's the real culprit. Why did our power go down? It was the magnetospheric compression. We go from this in the morning, 4 or 5 p.m. in the afternoon, and look at that compresses all the way down to that white ring is where our satellites are. It was so intense that the inflow of particle charge broke through and directly contacted our Earth. Surface charging, the auroras over the South Pole glowing, the auroras over the North Pole glowing, but the charge coming in was so intense. Purples and blues. Rolf Witsche forecast for decreasing solar winds. As this happens, our sun is going to go into a phase shift. The ancients were trying to warn us in some of their petroglyphs. This is Valentina Zarkova's work, interference in the hemispheric rotations. And then during this event, never before seen type of light, a new plasma filament type in our skies. This signals a change from dark mode to glow mode in our atmosphere with the electrical charge, electric universe. So my question is, are we going to see this first in our heavens or are we going to see the white dragon? Because what was just up there was something the ancients witnessed and it is here again. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to ADAPT2030. All the headlines with the power outages across the U.S., what they're really not talking about either, power outages in Europe and the satellites. New York, during the same time as the Gotham Shield exercise, San Francisco, Los Angeles... But notice all the other areas in yellow that lost electricity that are not making the national news in the U.S. And I wonder why not. Okay, focusing on three places. But what about Minneapolis, Seattle, Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, Chicago? Why are these not being put up? That is such a gargantuan outage. It just cannot be from somebody hacking into a grid. That's both on the East Coast and the West Coast. So many theories abounding. Everything from hackers to Operation Gotham Shield. Let's take a look at our sun. Now the CME directed, which would have been a Carrington event type of scenario, that CME is on the opposite side of the sun, traveling away from the earth. Incredibly beautiful though. And even when looking where the CME is going to travel, it's nowhere near earth. The KP index spiked. But what's interesting is the solar wind speed ramped up to around 800 kilometers per second. And also the density, the amount of charged particles also increased at that exact 4 to 5 p.m. time period. You see it everywhere you look. Definitely some anomalous magnetogram readings. Which brings me to the whole point of our Earth's magnetosphere is so weak due to the intensifying grand solar minimum and effects from our sun. That it goes from something like this in the morning... Regular buffeting that keeps us protected into the afternoon and a full collapse down into where the satellites orbit our Earth. And then even at 6 p.m., two hours later, that's, that push down into the orbital range of the satellites still continues. Now what you can see here is a breakthrough of the energy directly onto our planet. That breakthrough in the red at about the 2 o'clock position there. Which, in my personal opinion, I believe is the cause for all of these outages. And you can easily see why some of the satellites were affected. See how far that compressed down? So all of these events occurred right between the 21st and the 22nd. I mean, Earth was hit directly, but the plasma density was very low at that time. It had to be something else. Surface charging. Let's talk about the electric universe and the charge that just swept in through our poles. This was in the southern hemisphere. It's almost touching the blue range. That's how intense it was in the south. But when we get to the northern hemisphere, that particle charge is so dense that it's overwhelming the pink spectrum. It goes straight from green into the blues and purples. 
Where's the red? It just disappeared in there. That is such an incredible charge. I'm going to bet somewhere in Scotland lost power as well. And when I was trying to dig in to find exactly during these same hours from, say, 6 p.m. on the 21st through the 22nd, everywhere I looked, not available, not available, magnetogram not available, field aligned currents, which means the Birkeland currents on their polar cap, not available, plot not available, magnetogram again, the pulsation graph not available, everywhere I looked, not available. And what's interesting too is when you look on the exact same plots, that whole time frame has just disappeared out of there. So let's take a look at the phase shift change happening in our sun. So if you want to see the future, this is it. The solar cycle comparison compared to the last solar cycles, we need to go back into the 1800s to find something with this amount of sunspots. Rolf Witsche put out this great forecast for the solar wind decrease along with David LaPointe in the primer fields on our sun collapsing. I firmly believe when that hits 36%, we are going to go into a phase shift which is going to release an EMP from the sun. 36 is a sacred number across all ancient cultures. That is a representation of the percentage of the solar wind that's going to usher in this phase shift. Now let's take it into the modern day. This is the mechanics and the mathematics to explain it. Once this wave pattern changes, that is the shift to the cold sun. So let's just jump right into Shepard, Zarkov, and Zarkova's work. They're talking about dynamos on the sun and the different hemispheres and how they cancel each other out. And this is what really ushers in that phase change. They can forecast out to how intense the activity on our sun is going to be, and especially when we get down anywhere past 2030, we are going back into literally no activity. The amount of sunspots, we're going to be counting those in the thousands of days, not hundreds like we do now. And you start to see wave patterns in the petroglyphs, and you might ask yourself, were they much more advanced technologically, and when their society collapsed, the survivors were the ones that still had this info. Like, if we lose all of our power today on the planet... You and me, in our mind, we can still go carve rocks and try to explain to people what's going on and try to carve science into rocks to prepare the people for thousands of years in the future. Our solar wind is diminishing. And when it clicks over into this phase shift, and I personally, again, believe 36% is where it's going to be, this Carrington event is going to occur once more. And it's going to wipe out our electrical grids. And they're going to go down for weeks, months, or years. And this critical infrastructure, everything from the water pumping to the oil and gas and everything else we need for public health and hospitals and security and financial services so you can take money from your bank is going to be wiped out. This is also affecting our weather. This phase change is not CO2. It's electrically induced changes that are shifting the jet streams, creating more cloud cover with the cosmic rays. Our cloud bands are shifting in response to the electrical forcing coming in through the Birkeland currents. Ulysses, why don't we start there? Why is everybody not talking about Ulysses? These satellites recorded less wind pressure, weaker magnetic fields, and increased cosmic rays. These are all the same things we're seeing now. And then last night, I shake my head in disbelief. The gods have returned to our skies. This is a new type of plasma filament that just showed up. It's a new type of northern light that appeared during this exact same solar event that took down our power grids. And they're trying to blame it on hackers. This just shows that the phase shift has started that plasma that was not electrified enough to show itself called dark mode has now been electrified enough to show itself called glow mode. The electrical forcing on our planet is enough that these field aligned currents with the electrical charge running down with the particles is now inducing enough current for us to see what was invisible in the skies before. So my question to you is, are we going to see white dragons out of Chinese ancient mythology? Or are we going to see more of these petroglyphs? Because it is here. And you better get ready because when these electrical grids go down, it's going to be more tumultuous than losing our food and our crops. This is 
the shot across the bow that our electrical universe is about to phase shift and change. And what they witnessed in the heavens is the ancients is back again. So when you see something in the skies that has not been around or recorded for 10,000 years, and the media is going to try to all explain it as terrestrial and humans are the cause of it, everything, even the hackers, when it was the plasma. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You are really going to need to get prepared. And starting with seed growing kits, so at the bare minimum you can grow some of your own food. I encourage you to jump over to Food for Liberty, their seed kit, packed to last for 10 years. Plus there's an enormous amount of seeds, so you don't need to use everything at one time. You can still grow acres of crops. 